<laughs> so that, that one is called uh, Aspergillus. Uh, and then z uh, zero don't meet your father. <laughs> <laughs> is the most rare kind, and uh, they grow in very dry environments such as the desert. And uh, they still need moisture, but not as much. So the thing is that we're starting to see is that mold, uh, from, from beginning to end, is very complex. It's not so subtle, it's not so cut and dry, and that you really need people who have an expertise in this field to determine what exactly it is. Are these toxic? These two? These two, no, they're levels of toxicity. So just one basically is toxic. One, yeah, and it's the most common. And especially uh, here in Ottawa, it's the most common one, and we'll find and we'll see why in a, in a, in a second. The thing is, though, although not all mold is toxic, all mold is allergenic, right? Um, is anyone here, just a random question, allergic to shellfish? Not really. Right? So you guys, guess what? <laughs> guess what? You guys are more susceptible to an allergy to mold than anyone else. You want to know why? Because what I talked about earlier. Their, their, their cellular construct, their outer shell, is as the same, it's the same cellular construct as that of a lobster, right? Uh, so, um, basically, if you're allergic to shellfish, you'll be more allergic to mold because of its cellular construct. It's the same chemical, it's the same, same cellular uh, composition. So what, it's pretty crazy, so right? what precautionary measures should be taken then? Get a filter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're a mask or something. Well, the thing is, don't, 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 don't come, I, I don't come into contact with mold, don't touch don't it, don't put it in your mouth, yeah. you know, the basic rules. So it's fine. It work the other way around. No, but I mean, if you have an allergy to mold, can you develop an allergy to salt or shellfish? You know, that's a good question. Probably, you know, one one should should automatically meet the other, correct? So that that would that would be interesting to kind of find out. But another interesting thing is that. With mold, in terms of its, uh, you know, kind of uh, allergic reactions to it, is that uh, everyone uh, inhales mold spores all the time. You know, we're, we probably inhaled it this morning coming in at, at one different level or another. The thing is that we all have an immune system, and our immune systems have been, you know, throughout the years developed to withstand contact with mold. Now, the problem with uh, people who run into health issues with mold is because their, you know, systems are immunocompromised. Or they're undergoing things such as you know chemotherapy for cancer, so their immune systems are weak. That's why you'll find people who have the most uh, health issues when coming into contact with mold as being you know the elderly, children, people with uh, weaker or lower immune systems, and and people who are uh, again uh, prone to allergies such as uh, shellfish. So there are three different ways. Uh, for people to get exposed to mold, one is uh, the you know inhalation. So that that's the mold spores that we inhale through our, our, our no nasal cavities, right into our chest. The other one is direct contact. So you touch it with your hands, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. The other one is uh, is ingestion. You know, through eating food or through putting an object in your mouth that has mold on it for whatever reason. Uh, you know, those are the, the different um, kinds of ways. Some of the common uh, allergic reactions. So that to the shellfish boys. Um, Mild is you know congestion, rash, itchy or watery eyes. Those and like I have all those symptoms today because my allergies are kicking in hardcore. So as I was uh, reading this this morning again, I was like, oh man, I hope I'm not allergic to mold. <laughs> right? Or I hope I'm not having a mold reaction. Uh, moderate. Uh, this is where it starts getting a little bit uh, more severe. Itchiness and difficulty breathing. Once it gets severe, uh, swelling, difficulty breathing and swallowing, abdominal pain, cramps, vomiting. Diarrhea, dizziness, and mental confusion. Yeah. Right. So what we, what we see right now is people who uh, who have severe um, allergic reactions to mold get really messed up. Apparently that's what that tells me when I look at that. Uh, and so mold is really, or people who have allergic reactions to mold, uh, could be really compromised in, in, their, in, their, in their daily lives. And especially someone like an elderly person or a child who's you know doesn't have the uh, you know. A, Immune responses to handle something like that well, you can really see how this can become detrimental in someone's life. Uh, some of the reactions on a super superficial level, uh, so the most common is uh, you know skin infections or nail infections or athlete's foot. Now, again, not all athlete's foot is attributed to mold, but again, uh, some of it can be. Some of it can be in contact with a moldy substance or something along those lines. Uh, subcutaneous. Uh, so this is more serious. This occurs when the infection gets under the skin. So, for example, you're uh, you're uh, a construction worker or you're a home inspector, 
and the, the morning before, you know, you were, you were nailing something and you got a cut on your arm, and then you walk into a house that is covered in mold, you're not properly protected, and mold spores goes underneath your skin, and what, what happens when mold spores comes into contact with water? Germinate. Start to germinate. What happens if it gets under your skin? It starts to germinate and causes uh, some serious infections. Uh, which is why you'll notice when mold busters goes into a home that uh, you know needs to be tested that they're they're properly uh, properly suited, uh, almost looking like a, like hazmat people, right? And, and and that's the way you gotta you gotta treat mold uh, is actually it's a, it's a toxic substance that could produce some major health consequences. So it needs to be approached as such. And systemic uh, reactions uh, is when mold attacks the kidneys, lungs, and liver, uh, and other organs, and this is where it can become life threatening. Uh, again, uh, this is what we were talking about earlier for inhaling or ingesting mold spores that comes into our system, comes into you know, our very uh, inner being. It latches onto something like our kidney or our lungs, and that could really cause some potential fatal consequences. So all this to say, I know it seems like a lot of just like, mold is scary and mold is bad, and, and, and it's true. And, and that's, that's one of the, the points that we're trying to make is that mold is a, is a serious issue and it needs to be taken seriously by people who are, are experts in the field. And again, not everything is mold. And, and that, again, causes another problem, where first of all, either we automatically assume that everything that we see is mold, or that we take the, the polar opposite approach, where, oh, that's not mold, it can't possibly be mold, so it's okay to be around it. And it could very well be, and you're running into, again, other issues. All right, uh, so we're just gonna skip through this. Um, I'm going to go right to the black mold because this is the thing that we're going to run into the most. Uh, and so black mold can be found in places that we've probably have seen black mold uh, you know, all over our household uh, houses growing up as kids. You can find it in plant debris and soil as well as in the high moisture or high cellulose uh, materials. Uh, the mold itself is black to green in color. It's kind of slimy and shiny. Really gross looking stuff. You guys have seen it, right? Not, not fun. And someone said it smelled really bad, right? Not cool. When it dries out, it becomes uh, gray and powdery, right? And that's, that's, again, just because a mold dries out doesn't necessarily mean that it's not, again, uh, not producing its spores and its toxicity levels. It's still there. Uh, so as we were looking at earlier, the people who are most often at risk for mold exposure include uh, people with compromised immune systems, the uh, elderly, infants, uh, asthmatics, for example. Um, again, the potential for adverse health effects from mold exposure are, are unique to each individual. Since no two immune systems are alike, not everyone's going to have the same kind of allergic reactions to mold. So is everyone good so far? I have a question. Could might be a stupid question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Could mold actually grow within a body of water? Like, um, as a, like a, well, again, you got to keep in mind that it Say needs, a well. It needs, say a well. Within it, a well. Could well you it, need, it needs to be attached to an organic compound. So it needs to be... an organic compound. So, like, so if like, we had the wet, wet, wet walls of a, of a well... What well, well, exactly. Right? Therefore, you could have wool growing in Precisely. It. But, so like, for, for mold to just, like, grow yeah. out of water for, from nothingness, uh, no. Uh, if, 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 if it grows on, on uh, the... Yeah, you know, like, from... Uh, from exactly like the, the, the wall of a well or like a piece of wood floating See, in the water. The only thing is the wall of a well is metal. So well, we're talking about yeah. stone or talking about... Like, concrete yeah. wells too. I mean, right? like, True, yeah. a couple of different, <laughs> yeah. We could run into like possibilities and theories all day, but I mean like we'll just kind of stay on focus. Right? Mold will not just grow out of water or out of the ether somewhere. Uh, it'll usually, it needs to be attached to an organic, or organic compound. Why is that? Because it eats, or what's the... It, it, need, it needs something to, to grow on. Like, like we were talking about earlier, right? Mold is, uh, you know, like this little guy here, right? So, picture it like, like soil. It needs something to take root in and to grow underneath. Right? Okay. Right? You can't do that in metal. It's Precisely. Okay. But then you do see some mold, like, on, like, like say, a caveman would have like mold on the rock. Sorry, a, a, a caveman? <laughs> I'm just using this as an example. Okay, okay. Can go just... back, like, I mean, mold goes back to the days of cavemen. I mean, there'd be mold on the top of a rock, you know. Because the rock is a porous material, so... Uh, because of this crevices and... Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I got it. 
Okay, I'll have to research on, uh, on caveman history. <laughs> well, that's so, like, I mean, if you look, like, this mold, I mean, there's been mold ever since the beginning of mankind. You know, mold just isn't something that just all of a sudden is here in our generation. No, of course not. It's, yeah. it's a fungi, right? Yeah. So, it's a bacteria. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's a, a relationship between indoor mold and increased symptoms such as eye, nose, and throat irritation, coughing, shortness of breath, asthma, and allergic reactions. Uh, so these are all common symptoms. And I mean, like, you know, uh, you know, we could all assume that, you know, if we got these symptoms, we're just going to, we just have a common cold. But, uh, you know, you never know. It could be something else. Uh, there's something that's called, uh, uh, we're going to look at it just in a second. It's called uh, you know, sick building syndrome. You guys heard, heard that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Which is why it's important to get something like a hydro HEPA fil filtration device inside your office because, again, it minimizes the, uh, the level of particles in the air and it you know, removes some of those potentially hazardous uh, you know, particles floating around in, in, in the building. So indoor air quality is uh, the quality of air uh, in and around buildings and structures. And uh, the thing is with preventing or you know, getting rid of mold is that your air quality needs to be exceptional, needs to be good. Uh, so it's frequently associated with health and comfort of the building's occupants. Uh, did you know that we spend about 90% of our time indoors? Does that make sense? That's a lot of time. And like, I started thinking about that. I was like, you know what, I probably do spend about 90% between you know, work and home, the grocery store, <laughs> and uh, you know, the bank <laughs> nowadays, right? So it's, uh, um, it's crazy. Which, which, you know, which is why, again, we need to really make sure that the quality of our air that we're breathing is good quality. We're just going to minimize our, our health, health problems if our air quality is uh, exceptional. Why is indoor air quality so important? Poor indoor, indoor air quality sorry, can worsen symptoms related to asthma and allergies. Those have also been linked to sick building syndrome, uh, a combination of symptoms that uh, thought to be caused by the environment in which a person lives or works. Again, that's just because the particle uh, count is high and that uh, you're probably breathing in some noxious, uh, noxious substances. There are some indoor contaminants that, that add to that. Uh, some of the biological contaminants um, are living organisms like mold or like uh, bacteria and dust. Other um, contaminants can be chemical, such as, uh, you know, personal care products like cologne, perfume, which is why there's an increase in, you know, don't wear cologne, don't wear perfume on, on the bus or other things like that. Uh, household cleaners, uh, various building materials, and uh, some of the emissions and gases uh, by, uh, you know, devices, electronic devices. And actually they've been doing uh, some, some studies about how uh, computer systems perhaps emit, um, you know, unhealthy particles because of, like, you know, your picture you got dust in your, in your fan. And what happens when, when the dust gets kind of blown out? You've got those kind of particles floating out in the air. So all this to say that a hydro HEPA filtration system, yeah, the best way to go. And again, we have uh, all those brochures afterwards for you guys to kind of uh, stock up on and, and you could purchase them. How much are they? 1500 Yep. And that's the standard size for one house? Well, there's, uh, we, can, we can come back to this after the... Okay. Yeah, we, we would have brought, we brought our machine last presentation, we just, uh, you know, just didn't have the, uh, the, the, the room for it. It's not that, it's not that big, but it stands about this high, about this wide. It has uh, pretty much like multiple layers, almost like a, like a beehive. And uh, those are all different types of filters. And actually, it's, uh, they're really cheap to replace, you replace them once a year. Again, these guys will, uh, the, the experts here will, um, will explain to that explain that hydro have a filtration system more at length afterwards. But something to definitely look into, pick up a brochure afterwards and, uh, and make sure you get it. Um, so some of the other indoor biological uh, contaminants can include pollen, bacteria or viruses, uh, insects or insect fecal matter. Again, a common problem in places that aren't you know, kept clean regularly. Which is why cleanliness in, in houses and environments and businesses is, is important because it minimizes our risk for potential infection. All right, so uh, we're pretty much at an all-time high in terms of awareness about air quality and about mold, and especially here in Ottawa. And uh, the reason why is that Ottawa is a hot spot for mold. Uh, you know, basically we're adjacent to uh, a river, uh, so an open bodies of water. Our city is, uh, has an aging underground infrastructure. Uh, we enjoy relative high humidity. 
and at the same time, you know, we're at a relatively low horizon at that sea level. So the thing is, for Auto in particular, like we're just uh, we're just like a mecca for, for potential mold, right? Because of all, all, the, all those uh, those different factors. Mold stock. <laughs> exactly. Right. So again, which is why uh, you know we all have a responsibility in this room, not only to ourselves and our own families, but also to the families that we're catering to in terms of you know new people buying new homes or uh, you know potential prospects. Yeah, it's, speaking. it's very important that we that we're aware of you know what we're dealing with and uh, you know the, the kind of limitations that we have.